Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. Next up on my uh, questions that students have complained over the years have had a hard time understanding. And remember, I always say that this is an English test as much as anything else. And you got to understand the meaning of words and you know, what it's called on the menu and what other people call it on their menu. So we're going to talk about data categorization, the term that NIST likes to use a lot. I'm a big fan of the term. Some people uh, blend it with classification and data labeling and stuff like that. So let's see if this helps anybody. To properly protect an asset, control architects need to first understand how asset owners perceive the value of each identified asset, as well as access requirements and restrictions. Who's allowed to see it and who shouldn't see it? Right? Uh, to ensure only those with need to know have access, which of the following data categorization principles needs to be agreed upon? Data classification must uh, by levels of sensitivity. Levels, you know, you go up and down, multi-level. And sensitivity, if, if you've never seen it, is mostly associated with confidentiality, you know, top secret. Um, data assets will need to be labeled with access control lists. Boy, that's a tricky one because typically uh, discretionary access controls uh, models use access control lists and mandatory uses labels. So not everybody uses the term label the same. So I don't know about B. Let's uh, hold on. Ac all data assets are required to be hierarchically classified. D, data compartmentalization needs to be implemented. Let's go a little deeper and see what's going on here. Now, again, as a CISSP, whether taking a test and you're getting questions on the test or from your actual uh, the people you support, the, the managers and data owners that, that you deal with, you have to understand their questions. Your job is to, is to sit there and go, I know it doesn't exactly say that, but I think you want A, B, C, or D in this case, right? And remember that not everybody uses the same term. NIST doesn't use the same terminologies and classification schemes as the ISA. So our job is not to tell customers they're ordering it wrong or get upset about the question on the test. It's to figure out what they probably mean and make the world a better place for everybody. So as you're studying, I hope you, you've seen the term, at least, or familiar with the term lattice-based access control. So when the, the U.S. military standardized orange, gold, gold stuff, 70s stuff, but when they first wanted to use computers to handle important data and they were classified their data by confidentiality by sensitivity levels and you'll know in the bella Pagel model no read up no write down yeah. um so you give somebody a clearance level and that allows you to implement what's called least privilege so if bob only needs secret to get his job done there's no reason to give him top secret this is the least privilege he needs but that doesn't mean he gets secret clearance everywhere. <laughs> I got secret clearance. Oh, well, come on in. No, that may be broken up into various compartments. A category set is also on the, uh, if you have a CAC, if you're in the US, that you're, you're, it's not just your clearance, but your category set's on there. Secret where? Top secret where? In what compartments? Right. So your data also needs to be, or may need to be, some things are, you know, often uncompartmented or unconfined is the term I've seen used in my Fedora Linux here. Uh, but having data compartmented helps us implement need to know. And that's what this question was looking for, right? So I think what they're saying is just because Bob needed to know secret, what else needed to make sure that or he needs to he has secret clearance, he might not be working in that department or on that project or at that location or for whatever reason you might break in a compartment. And uh, again, it's a Bell Lepage, which a lot of people think is old stuff, but it's not really old. It's actually, that's a big myth. It's implemented in Red Hat Linux. It's not the default, uh, you know, but uh, this is, it's certainly supported and uh, they call it multi-level security. I, I run Fedora, the freeware version in, in Target, but you can still see the label. So I told you, usually we'll compare, and either way, these are mandatory access control models because an access control list, the terminology generally refers to this. This is the ACL, and it's maintained by the by the owner, and which is me. Yeah. Um, but this security context, this is a label, and only security admins can modify this. 
So this is why uh, I didn't like the one answer that said label. Now, again, you got to be careful. Not everybody used the term label uh, exactly the same way, whether you're in data loss prevention systems, and it does kind of overlap, you know, uh, or uh, even AI, people are training uh, uh, deep learning. They know what they use labeling in a different way. Uh, a great way to also uh, consider your security uh, classifications, though. Don't just think secrets. <laughs> the, the answer to a brighter future isn't just keeping secrets. The answer is making sure that we can do commerce and, and, and trust the integrity and the availability of things. So uh, NIST 860, a very old document, still very, very good in helping you understand don't just think of sensitivity. Consider some people call this criticality or right? in integrity, right? The CIA triad. Yeah, so to properly protect an asset, yep, we do need to understand what they value. But this basically said to ensure only those with need to know. You, you Just because, you know, these privileges, you might have need to read it, but you didn't need to write to it. But compartmented helps me implement need to know. Boom. Awesome. I hope that helps people. All right. God bless. Hope to see you in one of my classes.